Did the NBA GMs predict the correct MVPs? As we discussed in a video the other day, the NBA's annual GM survey was released. In that video, we talked about the NBA's GM's predictions on who will be the best rookie in five years from their draft class. Well, today we are talking about their MVP predictions and how correct they were, and we'll just analyze it. Again, this chart and these stats, similar to the other video, are from The Ringer, so shout out to The Ringer for putting this together. So we'll start here. These are all the people who actually won the MVP. You can see on the bottom the names, those are the actual MVP winners. We'll talk about who they predicted in a minute. But as you can see, in 2003, for example, Tim Duncan won the MVP, and less than 20% predicted before the season that he would win. In 2004, you could see it's probably like 5%. I don't have the percentage in front of me, but like you could see on the chart, it's pretty low. Steve Nash got 0% of the votes. Zero for his two back-to-back -back MVPs. So now let's go to their predictions. We'll come back and forth from the chart and all this because there's a lot to talk about here. So you could see in 2003, they were expecting Kobe to win it. And that's not a bad choice, obviously, because it's Kobe, but Tim Duncan won the award. But, you know, I think I said about 20% had predicted that Tim Duncan would win. Obviously, that's not majority, but, you know, that's a decent portion. And the reason that it's also a decent portion, as you could see, 31% predicted Kobe. So it's not that Tim Duncan got so many less votes than Kobe. Like, if 90% said Kobe and then Tim Duncan got less than 20, then it would be a huge differential. But, like, you know, they weren't. Obviously, like, you can't just predict MVP. I'm not saying anyone's wrong or right here, by the way. Obviously, they're wrong when they predict it wrong. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, I'm not judging them based on their picks. I'm just analyzing and just, you know, seeing the trends and just having fun with it. So Tim Duncan actually got a decent amount of votes for that year. But obviously, he won it, and Kobe was the leader in the votes. The next year, they all assumed that Tim... Well, not all, obviously, 43%. But 43% assumed that Tim Duncan would go back-to-back. -back. And obviously, coming back to the chart, we saw Kevin Garnett won it. And not that many people predicted that he would win. Now, these are the two. Shaq got 57% of the votes, and Tim Duncan got 58% of the votes in those two back-to-back -back years, where Steve Nash won the award. And he got 0% of the votes. And I'm not going to sit here and act like I was watching basketball in 2005, you know? So, like, <laughs> I can't tell you if, like, Steve Nash at that time was thought of as potentially being an MVP. I know that, like, obviously with the Phoenix Suns, and the whole system that they ran with Mike D'Antoni and stuff like that, you know, and Steve Nash was just really good. Obviously, that's why he won MVP. But, like, I can't tell you for certain if, like, he is getting, you know, snubbed in these GM votes. Like, I can't tell you if he should have gotten a vote because I wasn't watching at the time. <laughs> so I don't know what the conversation was around Steve Nash. But we could see that he got 0% of the votes. And majority went to Shaq and Tim Duncan. So that's very, very interesting. Like, that's just something interesting to notice. Now, we know that Shaq was Shaq. <laughs> so, like, Shaq obviously could have won MVP plenty of times. So, they're not wrong for that. That's not a bad pick. Tim Duncan, you know, obviously we know who Tim Duncan is. So, like, they weren't bad picks, but I'm just curious. Maybe someone was watching basketball at that time could comment down below and let me know. Like, was Steve Nash just snubbed by the GMs at that time? Or should he, like... Or did it just come out of nowhere? I just looked it up. He was on Dallas the year before, and obviously he was playing with Dirk. I'm starting to have like a little bit of memory, not live memory, obviously, because again, I wasn't watching, but like having memory, like learning about this and hearing about it, like how Steve, when Steve Nash left and stuff like that. So I have like a slight memory. So it makes sense. This is the first time that Steve Nash, you know, goes to, I don't know if you would call it his own team, but you know what I'm saying? Like goes to Phoenix, a different team, and they run the show through him. Now we get to the LeBron James era, because as you can see on this list, LeBron James was predicted to win the MVP. A lot of times. The irony that Dirk wins the MVP right after Steve Nash, and obviously they played together, so that's just funny. But LeBron got 39% of the votes in that season, the 07 season. And then Kobe, obviously we can see right there, won the MVP in 08. LeBron got 30% of the votes. Kobe got a little less than 20, so again, not like super far off. Like they were, you know, obviously some voters thought that Kobe would win. So there's not like a huge discrepancy in these two seasons, 2007 and 2008. We see who won it. LeBron was voted. And then LeBron was voted again in 2009, 2010. He got four straight years of being predicted to win the MVP. And the next two years, he did it. So as you could see, majority of the GMs predicted it correctly in those two years especially 2010, he got like 70% of the votes. If you look at this chart, I think it was in the 60 percentage if I go back to the other chart, but like 
60, 70%. So the GMs were just ready. Like they were just waiting for LeBron to win his first MVP. They probably were just gonna keep voting him until he won one, to be honest. 2011, we see it was Derrick Rose who got zero votes again. Now, I know some people think that LeBron should have won MVP in 2011. I know some people have that sentiment. Derrick Rose, like, I think we, like, Derrick, everybody loves Derrick Rose, right? Like, nobody disrespects Derrick Rose. But I feel like people forget Derrick Rose was doing his thing in the league at that time as well. Like, he didn't win that award out of, like, pity. Derrick Rose was really, really good. And Derrick Rose was supposed to be the next big thing. He was the youngest MVP ever at age 22. Those Chicago Bulls teams with him and Taj Gibson and Joe Kim Noah, like, they were really good. 67% of the voters, though, thought Kevin Durant would win. So they started to see the Kevin Durant, you know, Kevin Durant coming up. They knew he was going to win an MVP in the future, too, because Kevin Durant is just that good. It's very interesting that he got 67% of the votes. Like, he got almost as much as LeBron the year prior. So they must have really thought Kevin Durant was about to make this gigantic leap. I went back and looked because I just was curious because I don't memorize everybody's stats. <laughs> so I did look. And the 2009-2010 season that LeBron won, Kevin Durant averaged 30. 30 in this season. So this is probably a big reason why they voted for Kevin Durant the next year because they're like, whoa, wait, Kevin Durant averaged 30. He's really good. Like the OKC team is coming up. So they were probably like, Kevin Durant is next up and he's only going to get better, which he obviously did. So it makes sense as to why so many people voted for him. Like when you average 30 in a season, it makes sense. And he averaged 28 or 27 in the next season. So it makes sense also why the next year, because he did not win in 2011, because Derrick Rose won, as to why they would vote him again. Because Kevin Durant was, it looked like he was going to be an MVP at some point. Obviously though, in 2012, LeBron won. In 2013, LeBron won. And as we see, most people voted for LeBron in 2013. After he won the first one, they're like, he's going to go back to back. Now you could see a good portion of them voted for LeBron in 2012, probably 40 something percent, but Kevin Durant got 50 plus percent or 60 percent. However, I think it was 56 percent. So that's why Kevin Durant's name was on the list and not LeBron's, because even though he got a bunch of votes, Kevin Durant was the leading vote getter. But clearly almost half the GMs still thought LeBron was going to win again too. <laughs> and he did, and then he won the next year and he got majority of the votes. Funny enough though, we go to 2014, and Kevin Durant only got a little over 20% of the votes, which you would think, because of what they saw from him and how he still has a 1-1, you would think he would be the next one getting a lot of votes again because he still didn't win. I know I'm blocking it a bit, but 69% said that LeBron was going to win three MVPs in a row, back to back to back. They were confident. He was still in Miami at that time. They had just won a championship. So I guess it makes sense, but at the same time, like, I don't know. They weren't wrong in this prediction, like, LeBron was LeBron at that time, but Kevin Durant still had him won one. So I'm surprised Kevin Durant got such few votes. 2015, Steph Curry got 0% of the votes. And then the next year, when he went back to back, he still only got like 10%. That's kind of crazy. As you can see by this chart, they thought it was going to be LeBron again, LeBron again, LeBron, LeBron, LeBron. <laughs> LeBron literally got one, two, three, four, five straight MVP votes here. And then I think he got two but two or three prior, so like eight straight. And I know LeBron was really good, but did the GMs really think LeBron was gonna win eight MVPs? Like, I don't think they would even give out the award eight times to somebody because voter fatigue. Whether or not he deserved it is not the point. Like, I just, I don't know why they kept voting every single time thinking he was gonna win every time. Now, he didn't win any of these years, so maybe that's why. But like, I feel like at a certain point, he wasn't gonna win because the, the the voters are not going to vote eight times for somebody. Again, I'm not saying he didn't deserve it. I'm just saying, like, voter fatigue. That's It just happens. I'm a little shocked that Steph Curry got such few votes in 2016, though. That's a little crazy to me. After, you know, the season that they had, they won a championship. And then, obviously, we saw what Steph Curry did that season. But, like, obviously, they don't know that before the season. But still, only, like, 10%. That's a little... A little crazy to me. Westbrook got over 20% of the votes. I actually think that's a good number for him. I think a lot of people thought with Kevin Durant leaving, it opened up the door for him. So it makes sense. All right, here's what I'm going to do. We are going to stop there at 2017 and we will finish the rest of them in tomorrow's video. So stay tuned for part two. We will talk about the rest of the GM's predictions for MVP. I hope you guys enjoyed this video.